Hitchhiking is risky business. It's incredibly dangerous, right? You're welcoming complete strangers into your life. You could be stepping into someone's vehicle or picking someone up who might be an escaped criminal, a sex maniac, a vicious murderer. You don't want to become a victim of a circumstance you could have avoided. This is the general thinking around hitchhiking, but this thinking isn't entirely based on facts. And more importantly, it's not the main reason that hitchhiking died in the United States. Here comes a car. Okay, now watch me. I'm gonna use number one. Keep your eye on that thumb, baby, and see what happens. This is probably what hitchhiking would feel like today. I still got my eye on the thumb. Well, something must have gone wrong. In 21st century America, people just don't trust hitchhiking. It feels like reckless behavior, but that wasn't always the case. Though the height of hitchhiking seems to have taken place in the 60s and 70s, the practice actually has its roots in the early 1900s. For automotive hitchhiking anyways. Hitchhiking on horse-drawn carriage probably happened, but the history there is kind of murky. The clip you just saw was from the 1934 film, It Happened One Night. It took place at a time when hitchhiking was a social norm. And most research points to it becoming a norm thanks to World War I. Droves of young enlistees had to travel to unfamiliar places to train or be shipped out. In a time of war, most people were willing to help their country in any small way, like giving a lift to a young soldier it was your patriotic duty. The Roaring Twenties brought in wealth. But by the 1930s, the Depression had set in. Wealth wasn't so ubiquitous. A lot of people didn't have cars and they still needed to get around. Your options at the time were to try hopping on a railroad, a dangerous and frowned upon practice. Or you could hitchhike which seemed like a safer alternative and had the added bonus of good conversation and solidarity in a time of economic weakness. People really enjoyed the good conversations. Hitching a ride was considered a fun way of getting to the places you needed to be. Over the next few decades, hitchhiking persisted. When World War II came around, hitchhiking was even encouraged. The country was rationing gas to help the war effort, so it again became a patriotic duty to pick up hitchhikers. Because, let's be honest, if you're riding alone, you're riding with Hitler. And nobody wants to ride with Hitler. Fast forward to the 1960s and 70s, and hitchhiking exploded in popularity. This was a time of love for your fellow neighbor and for the environment. Hitchhiking was not just friendly. It was a way of lessening your emissions and being a bit better to the earth. It was a show of human interdependence. It was also a way to go against the man. It was anti-consumerist. People hitchhiked to rallies, anti-war demonstrations, to vote, and much more. Hitching a ride became a symbol of the counterculture. The FBI and local police began using scare tactics to demotivate hitchhiking. Now, I say scare tactics because they put out posters like this. And that inspired a whole heap of media coverage that looked like this. And to be fair, it's not like they were completely wrong. There are inherent dangers when it comes to picking up strangers, and there have been many cases of violent crimes committed either by hitchhikers or towards hitchhikers. But according to the few studies that were done at the time, it seems like they blew the numbers way out of proportion. According to a California Highway Patrol study in 1974, the number of violent crimes that involved hitchhikers was just 0.63%. Meaning that the bigger risk is just getting into a car that is being driven. As a result of the 1956 Federal Highway Act, Interstate highways had spread across the country by the mid-70s. If you've ever been on an interstate, you know there isn't really a good place to walk or stop your car on them, which made it slightly more dangerous to hitchhike. 
So police began cracking down on hitchhikers by either discouraging or banning the practice on most roads. It's much less appealing to pick people up with the knowledge that you could be arrested for doing so. But according to experts, the main reason that people don't hitchhike anymore is they just don't need to. Since the 1960s, the amount of households that own one or more cars has consistently increased. The length of time that cars last also increase, making them worthy investments for people in the long run. When you have your own car, you don't need to hitchhike. And this is what really killed off the American hitchhiker. But that doesn't mean that hitchhiking is fully dead. There is still a devoted community for it, and there are many online resources that suggest best tips and practices for hitchhiking in the 21st century. And when you take a look at the world outside America, hitchhiking is still very much alive. In Cuba, hitchhiking is encouraged, and in fact, mandatory for government vehicles whenever there's space in the car. Israel and the Netherlands have designated spots and signs where people can hitch rides, and around the rest of the countries, hitchhiking is legal. In less wealthy or rural parts of many countries, hitchhiking is still necessary, as cars can still be pretty sparse. Hitching a ride may have fallen out of favor, but the tradition is still very much alive. If you made it this far, thank you so much for checking out this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you so choose. It really helps us out in creating awesome content like this. If you're looking for more nuance, we've left some links in the description below for the articles that we use when researching this video.